instead. It's true. Hi, this is Mike with Ritual Fitcraft, and we are online for the first ever Kettlebells for Yogis class online. Uh, this is my partner Jen, and she is here to help us with some demo, uh, some demonstrations today. Um, this class is a class that I normally give uh, during uh, a, a uh, this is a class I normally give in person at Wild Light Yoga, uh, Kettlebells for Yogis every Thursday at noon, and uh, for the foreseeable future, I'm just going to be doing this online. Um, I really, really appreciate everybody's support, and uh, speaking of support, if you can uh, become a, a Patreon member, my Patreon is uh, Ritual Fitcraft, R-I-T-U-A-L-F-I-T-C-R-A-F-T, -I -I and that'll help me to uh, continue to bring these classes to you. Uh, and uh, during this time, that would be a super awesome thing to do. I would really appreciate that a lot. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started uh, the same way that we do during uh, class at Wild Light Yoga. And the first thing that I like to do is to run everyone through a uh, kettlebell meditation, a grounding meditation. And I feel like that's a real important thing for us to be doing right now anyhow. So um, to start, I really like everyone to go ahead and grab a kettlebell. If you've got your kettlebell at home, you go ahead and sit cross-legged on the floor and you just kind of place your kettlebell right there. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, get grounded with you. I'm going to do the meditation as well. And so uh, when you meditate, it's just a matter of focusing on your breath uh, for now. That's the type of meditation that we're going to do. And I want you to sit cross-legged. Uh, if, if this is really uncomfortable for you, you can sit on a yoga block, and that will help you to be in a, maybe a more comfortable position. You want to try to keep your spine upright as much as possible. And I really like to think about a crown, my crown chakra and a silver line coming up from my crown chakra. And I just grab that. Maybe it looks like a spider web. And I just grab it, and I'm pulling it up a little tiny bit. And that makes my, my posture a little tiny bit taller. So then I feel that line from the top of my head all the way down my spine into my sits bones and down into the floor beneath me. And I really just want to think about the space that, uh, that is my body where it's touching the floor. And I want to feel all of those spaces and feel the sensation of my body pushing into the ground. And then I want to breathe in, breathe in through your nose and I want you to really expand your belly first. And as you continue to expand your belly as you're breathing in, you'll, you'll start to expand your chest a little bit. And then maybe your chest will rise at the end as well. And that's okay. And when you exhale, I want you to breathe out through your mouth like a big rushing sound. Just like that. One more nice big breath in through your nose, expanding your belly. And exhale it all out. Take one more nice deep breath, expand your belly, blow it all out. And I want you just to continue to feel that spot on the floor and your, your body pushing into that and feel the kettlebell in your hands and how heavy the bell is and how connected to the earth it is. And I want you to use that as your anchor the kettlebell is anchoring you to the earth. I want you to take three more big belly breaths and blow them out. One. There's two. Final big belly breath. Three. All right, go ahead and open your eyes. Reorient yourself to the room. You can wiggle fingers and toes, maybe move your head from side to side. Shrug your shoulders a little bit. Just feel what it feels like to be in your back in your body. And then we are going to start with a gentle 
activation. Can I take that bell, please? A gentle activation and warm up. Let me get this out of your way. And for the first part of the activation, I want to have everybody uh, do a thoracic warm up. And to start this, you're going to get into tabletop position or quadruped position. And that's down on your hands and knees. Is this a good orientation, or should I be? No, that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. Thank you. All right. And then what you want to do is you want to tent your fingers uh, on the side of your head. Do it on the left side, please. There you go. Perfect. And I want you at this point to take a half breath in, and then you're going to exhale all of that out, wring it out, and pull your elbow through this hole on the side. Perfect. And really just trying to wring this out, trying to squeeze it together as tight as you can. And then you want to sit back, open up, and breathe in at the same time. Pull this elbow into the ceiling as high as you can, looking at the elbow past the elbow into the ceiling. And really pull this open. And that's your breathe in. And then exhale. Go ahead and move. Ring it out. You can do this part. Inhale, open up. Sitting back real far. Exhale, ring it out, coming forward. Inhale, open up, sit back. What number is that, three? Yeah. All right. I want five of these total at home. This is number four for Jen. The reason that this works really, really well is because when you're forward and ringing this out, you're getting a lot of movement up in here. When you sit back, it forces this to stay stable and it forces the movement into the thoracic spine from here to here. And that's what we're aiming for is this area. Beautiful job. She's going to do the other side. I want you to also join her in doing the other side as well. Ring and all that breath out. Pulling the elbow through this side as hard as, can, as she can, and then she sits back, opens up, and breathes in here. Exhale, ring it out. Sit back, open up. Really trying to stick the chest out, get a big belly full of air. It's a little tough to breathe like this. You're not used to it. That's okay. This is number three. See how she's sitting back all the way on her heels? There's no space between her, her heels and her rear end. Four, right? Big breath in, elbow to the sky. Excellent. And number five. And so yeah, what this does is it makes this area really mobile, or sorry, for the thoracic spine. It makes the thoracic spine really mobile. And uh, you want a real mobile thoracic spine to help your shoulder health. And today, uh, with the kettlebells, we're doing a lot of shoulder stuff. Uh, so shoulder health is really, really important. Shoulder mobility is real important. And if your mobility is not real great, this is the first thing that I, that I would give you if you were training with me in person, because that's going to help to improve your mobility quite a lot. Next exercise, we're going to move down the chain a little bit. So this was the thoracic spine here. We're going to move down, and we're going to really, really target the glute. And the glute is the gluteus maximus muscle. And uh, I should ask before I before I just put my hands on you. Sorry about that. Um, you have my consent. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate that. Consent's important. So for this exercise, we're going to go from quadruped position, which is this position here. And Jen's just going to get down onto her elbows. And what she's going to do is she's going to do a, a donkey kick. But I'm going to keep her on her elbows to do this donkey kick instead because what that does is it helps to uh, keep this uh, lumbar spine right here from here to here right this is your lumbar spine and you don't want this to be mobile you don't want to move this a whole lot so she's gonna keep this tight as she moves and then she's gonna bend this leg flex this foot and she's gonna try to bring this heel to the back of her head and she's gonna focus on this spot right here you see where the curve of the glute starts she's gonna focus on that spot right there go ahead and really kick back and then go ahead and just start giving me reps and she's just going to kick and she's going to squeeze this spot right where my finger is squeeze squeeze and that's really going to pushing through the heel the way she is and squeezing this spot where my finger is it's at the top of her hip basically right where the right where the uh the glute connects 
Uh, and for some people, it might feel like lower back pain if you feel this. Um, but it's actually just the, the feeling of the muscle being used. And you're not used to using this muscle very much, probably. And I want 15 of these kicks total. And then switch sides and 15 on the other side. Really, really focusing on squeezing the glute. You see how bent her leg is? She couldn't bend her leg anymore if she tried. And her foot is flexed, so she's trying to pull her toes towards her knee. You see that? That's exactly the foot position we want. Let me show you what it looks like if you do this wrong. This, or pointed toe. This is not what we want. You're not getting the same engagement here. It's, it's good, but it's not exactly what we want. We really want this bent leg, this flexed foot. This is perfect. And you, you can even put your hand in this spot on yourself and feel that engagement happening. You can feel your lower, uh, your, your upper glute and the way that it connects to your hip. And it's a real good idea to touch that while you're doing this, just to see what you can feel moving around back there. The more that you can feel those things and touch them and be like, oh my gosh, I feel a little, you know, a little movement. That's going to help your brain to really, really use those muscles. And that's the trick. Uh, and that's exactly why we do this activation is to get that warmed up so your brain is using it. And you can come up for a second. So for our next exercise, uh, this is actually going to be part of a part of a workout. And uh, I put them out of order on my paper. Uh, but what we, what we want to do now is we want to start getting blood flow to, to Jen's body uh, to make sure that she, uh, all the muscles are activating and blood is flowing. And one of the best ways to do that is uh, we'll, do, we'll start with body weight exercises. We'll start with body weight squats. And then uh, after that, we're going to have her do... Halo, which is a shoulder and thoracic spine uh, and tricep, and that's going to be with a kettlebell. And then we're going to go back to another set of squats with a kettlebell, and that's going to warm up her glutes and her legs and her lower body. And then we're going to go into Turkish get-ups, and Turkish get-ups are uh, going to be the majority of the program today. That's one of the best exercises that I can teach anybody. and. Uh, I actually had a Turkish get-up class that was scheduled at Wild Light, and it got canceled because of all this crazy stuff. So I f figured that uh, this might be a fun way to supplement that a little bit. Um, so, yeah, the squats might be a little hard to get all of you in the frame. Well, that's true. So I want you to turn to the side, and we're going to talk about the squat for just a second. Actually, this is a real good opportunity to examine this. Most people when they squat, can you give me a real bad squat? Most people when they squat get about here. Uh, and you see this is like half of a movement. Um, go ahead and shoot your knees forward when you squat. Most people when they squat do this as well. Actually, uh, scoot back a little bit. There you go, yeah, I think that's better. Most people when they squat do a whole lot of this. You see how her knees are really, really shooting forward like this? Now shoot your butt back instead and straighten up your knees. This is more of the position that you want your body to be in. Do that one more time. Come forward. You see this, this angle? We don't want this angle of the shin here. Go ahead and shoot your butt back. You really want that to be up and down as much as possible. And then go ahead and give me a real deep squat. And shift your weight back into your butt a little more. There you go. And up. So it's really just... What's that? Let me actually give him that. One second, yeah. It's really just in the, the way that you shift your weight back and forth. Um, if your weight is really pitched forward like this, if you're really like this, instead of like this, it's going to make a big difference in your ability to get low. This is going to prevent you from getting low, and it's going to hurt your knees. This is going to allow you to get real low. All right. So Jen's going to go ahead and do a set of body weight squats. I want 20 of these. And she's just going to shift her weight real far back. Breathing in on the way down. Breathing out on the way up. Breath in. Breath out. Breath in. Breath out. Can you see how her back is nice and flat the whole time? She's sticking her rear end out. She's sitting into her heels. See how deep she's getting to? This is a real good depth. You can 
can tell, her legs are pretty, pretty well parallel with the ground, and that's the depth that we're going for. Parallel or even below parallel if you're capable. 20 of these, that's enough to get you real warm. All right. How's that? Good. Good? Next, we are going to do the kettlebell halos. So if you have a light kettlebell at home, go ahead and grab a light one for this, especially if you've never done this before. And I'm just going to adjust the camera a little bit. Whoop, there we go. And you want to start with the kettlebell bottoms up. You see this position of the kettlebell is in? This is the starting position. And what she's going to do is she's going to hold it real close to her body, right under her chin. And uh, in a clockwise motion, she's just going to keep this close to her head and she's going to move it around her head. And she's going to, she's going to keep this nice and tight and stare straight forward. And just moving it around the head. And turn to your side, please. There you go. Thank you. And you see how the kettlebell comes down, down nice and low in the back here? And then in the front, it's right underneath her chin every single time. That's exactly what we are after. And you see how she's doing some fairly big arm motions? We really want lots of that arm movement. Uh, lots. On side. Yeah. Wait, how many? Twelve. Yeah, that's what I said. There we go. And I want 12 of these on each side. If I didn't say that already, I don't think I did. She's working real hard to keep her head straight. It's going to mess up her ponytail real bad. <laughs> Core is engaged. Glutes are engaged. She's got a pretty wide stance, which is good. You always want a wider stance than you think when you're working with weight. Maybe not than you think, but you always want a, a shoulder width stance. And uh, then you are going to do the other direction. So, I did the other direction. Oh, you did both directions yeah. already? All right. Well, if you didn't do the other direction, go ahead and do the other direction now. And uh, I did 12 on each side. You did 12 on each side? Yeah. So okay. Good, good, good. Um, so next, uh, we're going to go back to those weighted uh, goblet squats. So next uh, exercise is a goblet squat. And for don't support with your fingers. There you go. For a goblet squat, it's going to be exactly like the squat that we did before, but she's going to hold that kettlebell in the halo position right under her chin the whole time. Like you can even put it in contact with your, with your chin. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And what that does is it turns on the upper back here, and it gets your, your lats really engaged. And you really want to use your lats while you're doing halos and, and uh, as well. That's a real good thing to, to learn how to fire because your lats support your shoulder blades. And with the Turkish get-ups, we're doing a lot of lat and shoulder later on. So this is why we're running through all of this stuff right now. Go ahead and give me uh, 12 squats with that. Try to get your elbows in between your legs if you can. There you go. Yeah. You see how nice and deep she's able to get? And she's got this uh, nice spread in between where her knees are, where she can get her elbows down into that. That's exactly what we're after, that position. Let me see if I can... Change the camera a little bit again. So 12, nice deep squats. Getting the elbows in between the knees. Holding that kettlebell directly under her chin. Very nice work. All right, 20 minutes in, we're doing pretty good on time. We're gonna go for a solid hour today. How's that feel? Good. Good? Mm -hmm. Happy, happy? All right. <clears throat> so the next exercise is... Uh, heart rate's starting to get a little bit faster. Heart rate's starting to pick up a little bit. That's perfect. That's what we're after. The next exercise is the reason we're all here today, and it is one of my very favorite exercises, and it's called a Turkish get-up. And um, it's a body weight exercise that uh, you add weight to with the kettlebell. Um, but if you don't have a kettlebell, you don't even need a kettlebell today. 
I should have said that at the beginning. You don't even need a kettlebell for this. Uh, it's it's a, a body weight movement first and foremost. And then once we have the movement down, we're going to add the kettlebell so that you can see. Um, so wh what I want everybody to start with is just your uh, just your body weight. Okay? And I'm going to adjust this. Jen's getting down on the ground. Good night. <laughs> in a fetal position, if you see that. And uh, her elbows are together because she's on her shoulder. Scooch forward, there you go, that's much better. You see how well aligned she is? Um, knees are together. This is kind of a, a square angle, maybe a little bit above square, but that's perfect and good. Uh, her shoulders, if I went right straight down through her body, her shoulders are pretty close to even. Uh, her elbows are together here. That puts her spine in a nice straight line. Turkish getups, uh, Turkish getups are uh, all about alignment. So if you're into yoga, uh, this is like a perfect exercise for yogis. So she's going to start in this fetal position. Uh, go ahead and do your left side. Uh, no, your right side. You're on your right side right yeah. now. So she's going to do her right side first. I want everybody in uh, who's watching to also do your right side. She starts in a fetal position, and eventually she's going to do this with a kettlebell in her hand. But for right now, she's just going to roll over flat onto her back, put both feet flat on the ground, press her right hand to the ceiling with a fist. And one thing that I want to point out right away is that her fist is very straight, right? It's like she's punching somebody. Like there's not, break your wrist. Most people do this. This is the first thing that you got to that you have to make yourself stop doing when you're working with a kettlebell, especially. You really want this nice straight line here, okay? Knuckles to the ceiling, like you're punching the ceiling, or like you're flying like Superman. Whatever feels good for you. And then her other arm is going to go 40 degrees away from her body, right here, and flat palmed on the ground, okay? The other leg, the leg on the same side, is going to follow that. 40 degrees away, just like that. You see how her, her leg here is nice and straight, and her foot is dorsiflex. She's pushing her heel into the ground. This foot is also flat on the ground, and you see this? This is a nice, powerful position. She's got a real good ability to push off of this heel. Um, she's also uh, pushing this hand down into the ground, and sometimes I even like to make a fist on this side because I feel like it makes me a little stronger. Uh, and just more uh, engaged. And then what she's going to do is she's going to breathe and she's going to get tight here in the core. And uh, she's going to roll up onto her elbow on this side and push her fist straight up into the, into the sky. You see that? Should I do it again? Yeah, do three of those. There's number two. And I screwed that one up because my heel lifted off. Oh, your heel lifted off. So this is the first thing that's going to happen when you start doing this. Give me another one. This heel is going to no, pop up, there. probably pop up off the ground. And I want you to really focus on keeping that. There you go. Thank you. There, you feel the difference in that angle? Mm -hmm. There. So she's pushing into this foot. She's pushing into this heel as she rolls up. Give me three more. Just, if you're doing this at home, practice this. Push the, into this heel. Push into this foot. Push into this elbow over here on the ground. Punch up into the ceiling. Okay? This is a core exercise by itself. You could do this for you know, like 20 or 30 reps on each side as part of a regular exercise, and it would be great for you. All right, that's good. So the next step is her coming up. i got to fiddle with the camera for this stuff. The next step is for her coming up onto her hand on the elbow side. You see how the elbow is in contact with the ground? Go ahead and come up on your hand. She's just pushing that hand away like that. Okay, and then after that, she's going to take her right heel and she's going to dig it down into the floor real hard. She's going to put a lot of weight into that hand that she has flat, and she's going to make sure that the shoulder on that side is away from her, her ear. She's going to try to pull both of her shoulders as far away from her ears as possible while holding the position she's in. Then she's going to push through the heel on this foot, and she's going to give me a great big bridge 
You see this nice straight line that she has from, from knee to, to shoulder? This is the bridge that I'm looking for. As close as you can get to this, okay? Go ahead and give me uh, five of those. That was one. Here's number two. See how this hand is flat? There's number three. She's got that heel as a pivot point over there. She's pushing off the heel, which is flat on the ground over here. All right. So from this position, she's going to go up. She's going to bring the left knee as close as she can get to the right. Oops, I screwed up. Oh, yeah. Don't let your foot touch the ground. That's going to, going to get in your way. Do that five times for me. Look at what she's doing. Flat foot right here, pulling through, touching the knee as close as she can get it to this hand over here. You see that? That's what you're after. Pull the leg through. Don't let the foot touch. Plant the knee. Whenever you hit five, go ahead and stop. So this is a real strong position. She has weight in this shoulder, in this hand. She has this straight line right here that goes all the way down through to the other hand. She's got this knee right here that's supporting all of her weight. From this position, she's gonna go ahead and pivot her body up. And that's gonna bring her, yeah, go ahead and do that five times for me. There's one, there's two. You see this pivot? This is a hip hinge. See how straight her lower back is? She's pivoting up into that hip hinge. This is what you're after. Yeah, From that point, she's gonna windshield wiper that back leg. Just do that one more time for me. How was I? <laughs> Hand down on the ground, there, yeah. You see how she's just coming up from there, pivoting around, bam. Sorry, she's, like a lunge. Yeah, into a lunge position with her rear uh, toe wrapped underneath her so she can stand on her toes when she stands up. No, 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 there you go. And she's going to push through the front heel and squeeze her glute and come to a stand. Bam, there it is. You see how she brought her feet forward? Do that three times for me. Bam, foot forward from the lunge. The foot comes forward, she's standing up. Hand is still pointed towards the sky and she's looking at her kettlebell the whole time. There we go, thank you. And then, this is the top of the movement. You're halfway through the exercise at this point, okay? Now she's gonna take a step back into that lunge position again. And then, when she's in that lunge position, you can't see this real well, can you pit, uh, turn your body there? She's gonna put her hand straight out to the side and she's gonna, hinge at the hip exactly the way that she came up but it's in reverse bam see how that hand is on the ground now three more of those or two more there's there's number two so from this position hand down on the ground with a pivot she's going to kick her right leg through the hole that she's created do that three times for me if you can so from that pivot position that she just got herself into leg out through the hole one more time Pivot position, kicking the leg out, bam! Then she's gonna lower herself down to her butt. Nice and slow. And then she's gonna come down to her elbow. And then she's gonna roll flat onto her back with the fist still directly overhead. That is a complete Turkish getup. And if you're following along at home, that was probably a pretty good workout already because we did so many intermediate steps in there, huh? So then she's gonna do this on the other side. Should I do it with the kettlebell or still with body weight? Uh, do it on the other side with body weight, just so you're even. So this is a left side Turkish getup. She's flat on her back in a, a, in a fetal position. She's gonna roll over, uh, she's on her side in a fetal position. She's gonna roll over flat on her back. Heels are flat on the ground. She's gonna press her left hand, left, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I'm looking at the camera. She's gonna press her left hand and uh, right hand goes to the ground, right leg follows it. 40 degrees away from her body on both of those, okay? Hand is pointed up towards the ceiling. Eventually there's gonna be a kettlebell in it. Uh, she's gonna start by tensing her core, pushing into the left uh, foot, which is flat on the ground, pushing into the right heel to keep her right heel from popping up. And then she's gonna roll up and punch into the ceiling. Oops. Oh, it's a little hard. <laughs> there it is, yeah. Give me 10 of those. <laughs> that was one. <laughs> There's two. Just do this position a few times at home. It's a good ab workout. Three. Push up. There's four. 
And you can tell that her ears are not coming close to her shoulders. She's keeping her shoulders away, giving herself a lot of space in there. And that's exactly what she wants. This is a good ab workout. Bam. I don't know what number that is. What was it? Nine. Nine. Beautiful. And number ten. All right. Next step is going to be to extend the arm and push into the hand. You see that? There. That was perfect. She's going to bridge on this side, pushing through the heel. Nice big bridge like that. Go ahead and do it if you're not already there. Hang on a second. And then she's going to sweep her right leg so that it comes. Yep. Give me f five of those, please. From this position into the sweep up to getting the knee as close to the hand as she can. There's number three. You don't have to do these at home. As long as you've got the movement figured out, that's what we're concerned with. There's number four. One more. This is a demo. Number five. From this position, she's just going to sit up into a split squat like so. And then she's going to adjust her feet so that she can get them underneath her safely. Back leg two. Thank you. And she's going to stand, push through the front leg, squeeze the glute. Looking straight up at the kettlebell still. And this is halfway through the movement. She's going to take a big step back into a lunge, like so. Pivot a little for me. See how the arm goes straight out to the side? She's going to stick her rear end out and pivot down into that hip hinge. Give me five of those, please. So from this position, arm straight out, down into a hip hinge. She's not sitting back. You see how straight her back leg is still? She's not sitting back on her butt. She's pivoting. It's a hip hinge. This is exactly what you're after. How many was that? Five. Excellent. Thank you. And she's going to put all of her weight into her right hand and her left heel. And then she's going to shoot her leg through that hole that she's created. Give me three more of those. Four more of those. Give me five total. There's one two kicking the leg through the hole three from the pivot split squat there's four last one this pivot squ split squat position bam and then she's going to lower down to her rear end nice and slow and gentle down to the elbow rolling back flat onto her back kettlebell still overhead she's going to bring it down to her chest and then she's going to roll to the right and set the bell on the ground. All right, good stuff. Let me check time. 12.34, we're doing really good. How you feeling? Good. Good? All right, so let's go ahead and uh, I think I wanna get everybody doing one more round of the halos and the squats and then we'll do the final, probably the final round of get-ups. Okay. Um, so, go ahead and uh, grab a a, a bell uh, for squats. Let's do squats and then halos. I'm gonna try the one. Okay, she's gonna go with a heavier weight than the last time, which is great. If you've got more than one kettlebell at home, go ahead and do it. You see how she's got the kettlebell uh, bottoms up, so she's holding it by the horns. Hey, give me a front view real quick. She's holding it by the horns. You see that in front of her? Uh, those are the horns of the kettlebell. This part right here is the horns. This part right here is the handle. So horns is where she's holding it. This is the handle. This is the bell, okay? She's got this bottoms up. This is the bottoms up position. Go ahead and turn to the side. And we're going to do more squats. I want 12 of those. Please go for it. See how she's got her rear end out. She's sitting far back into her heels. Her shins are not at a, at a big angle with the floor. She's trying to keep those upright as much as possible. The kettlebell is underneath her chin the whole time. Doing a real good job of keeping that tight. Nice work. Such a good example. Thank you for helping me today, Jen. Yeah. Nice job. Fantastic. Ooh. Ooh, I started getting my heart rate up a little bit. Good, good. All right. Ooh. Next is the halos. She is going to get the smaller bell for the halos. You're going to do the big bell. Um, try the big bell. 
All right. Since she's going with a heavier weight, she's using this. Hey, turn a little bit for me. Just that there. Perfect. Yeah. Since she's going with a heavier weight, uh, we're going to do less of the halos. Okay. So give me eight of these in each direction. This is a big, heavy bell. It's nice work. One, two. She's keeping her head neutral. Her spine is neutral. She's shifting her weight a little bit forward to get that bell behind her, but that's fine. Her core is turned on. The bell is low in the back and underneath her chin in the front. She's not letting it droop down onto her chest or by her waist. Switching directions. That's one, two. There's three. Keeping that gaze forward, locked on something in the distance. There's five. You hear her breathe? Six. Seven. Eight. Nice work, Jen. Solid. All right. Catch your breath. Grab a sip of water. Uh, here's a real good trick. If your hands are sore at this point, maybe your grip's starting to hurt because you don't do a ton of kettlebell work. Jen does a lot. So I'm going to show you a real nice exercise to give yourself a little break um, and to help to deal with sore grip, okay? Um, maybe this is uh, starting to bug you a little bit. So what you can do, you can do this too if you want, is you take, uh, get yourself into a split squat position just like this and then take this arm and shoot it through. You can either do it real close up by your forearm and your elbow here or you can bring it a little, uh, let's give them a couple angles. See this? Either here like this or here. Both of those are going to be real good. And then what you want to just do is look at this shift that I'm making in my, my weight. I got my arm under here. It's really, really locked in in my, my knee pit. And I'm just shifting my weight down into that. And I'm crushing, crushing, crushing down into, uh, into that forearm. And it feels really nice. And you might find that your hand opens involuntarily. That's okay. Let it do it and then try to force it closed. Open it and close it. Get that, get some of that. Uh, good stuff. And then you can go like this and use your other hand maybe and move that in some circles. That might hurt, it might be a little uncomfortable. Don't force yourself into anything that doesn't feel good in your body, but for me this feels real nice. I like those circles. And then I'm gonna just do a little bit more up closer to the wrist. Open and close on that hand a couple times. Ooh, man, that's crunchy. This is a self-massage technique. You have to stay six feet away from everybody. You can still massage yourself. And then go ahead and do the other side. Same thing. You just want to get into a split squat position and loop your arm through all the way up to your elbow if you want is great. And then you're just going to lean forward and crush into that. Open and close your hand. Do circles both directions. Catch your breath if you're still in that spot that you need to. Move further away so it's just the, the forearm or the, just the uh, wrist. Open and close, crushing down with the weight. If you have carpal tunnel from sitting at a desk all day like this, um, that is going to really do a number on helping you uh, alleviate some of that carpal tunnel pain. Kettlebells are real good for that too because you're working your grip and that's exactly uh, the problem is carpal tunnel. Uh, it's a long story, but working your grip will help your carpal tunnel, I promise. How are you doing? You ready to uh, do the next set of get-ups? Mm -hmm. All right. We are back to Turkish get-ups again. This time Jen's going to use a kettlebell. Actually, you know what? Uh, let me check time. Before we do kettlebells, we're gonna do uh, something else. Oh. We are going to, you wanna grab yourself a book, okay? This is an excellent book, John Michael Greer, Learning Ritual Magic, I highly recommend it. Um, but it's also just a nice size and nice weight, okay? Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh. we're gonna do a really good exercise uh, to learn how to be patient and uh, mindful in your Turkish getup. This is like a, <laughs> a meditative sort of uh, movement practice, uh, much like yoga, where you really have to be in your body and focused on what you're doing. So grab yourself a nice, uh, decent-sized book. And 
what you want to do is you want to start in you want to start in your fetal position like so you see how our spine is nice and straight and everything else is really aligned beautifully fix your shoulders there you go that's what you're after and then she is going to um, start the Turkish get up movement by pulling the weight to her chest rolling over flat onto her back and then pressing her hand up to the sky and what I want you to do is balance this make a fist like that there you go so this is what we're after you see this nice straight line this is not good this is not good either of these directions if you're not perfectly straight up and down you're gonna have to work really hard so what we're doing is we're focusing on getting that straight up and down really dialed in and she's gonna start by balancing this book on her Brit on her fist and doing the entire Turkish get up on both sides with this balanced book okay you might drop it don't get frustrated if you do this is really hard uh, the first time I tried this with a book I dropped it a whole bunch of times so Book balanced Turkish get up. This is a fantastic drill. All right, Jen, go for it. Up onto the elbow, up onto the hand, big bridge, kicking the leg through that hole backward, finding that stable position. Slow it down, Jen. This is slow and mindful. She's going to stop at every point and take a breath in and then move into the next spot. Standing, book on point, nice job. Breath before you move into the next position. This is slow, this is mindful. This is reminding you that you have to focus on what you're doing all the time. Keeping you in your body. Nice work, that's much better. I like how much you slowed down, thank you. And then you are welcome to shift the book to the other side. See how she shifts her legs to accompany? Right arm is up in the air, left arm is up in the air, left leg is up, right arm is down, right leg is down. Book is balanced. There we go. Up to the elbow. Big bridge. She's taking a breath at every step, nice and slow and focused on what she's doing. Focused on the next movement. Remembering all of the steps. It's going to take you guys a while to memorize this. You're probably going to have to... Woo. A step between the mats. Oh. You're probably going to have to do a few of these before you remember the movement. But once you have it, your body will just remember. Big hinge. Nice breath at every step, kicking the leg out, down, rolling down to the elbow, rolling flat onto the back. Book is balanced the whole time. Nice work, Jen. How about we do one more of those each side? No! <laughs> Jen doesn't like to be focused. <laughs> no, it's good. She's a rock star. Don't let her fool you. All right, she's in, be in beginning position. She's gonna come up to the elbow, nice and slow. You see how her alignment is always aligned? Alignment's aligned. Her, her body is always <laughs> well aligned. All those things that I pointed out, she practices this and it comes with practice. Big step up, book is still there, see? There we go. Big step down to the lunge. She's gonna stick her arms out to the side, and pivot. She's taking a breath at every step. Nice. Beautiful, so good. She's gonna switch. Taking a breath at every step, up to the elbow. Great big hip bridge. 
sweeping the leg through next to the hand as close as she can get it adjusting herself so she can stand in a moment not gonna step on the top of her foot like that again Sorry. thank you <laughs> big step back there you go hinge take a breath at every step slow it down beautiful work All right, thank you so much. Now, if you are at home and you have a kettlebell that is an appropriate kettlebell for you to use overhead, feel free to change to that bell or, or use the bell that you've got in your hand. You can do this with a dumbbell if you want to add a little weight. You can get a heavy can of uh, soup. If you're going family size at this point, um, that might be a good weight or a jug of milk. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can use. Um, but I want to illustrate one thing as you're doing this, so go slow for your beginning. Right now, she... Uh, flip around. around. Yeah, do the other side. Here, I'll, I want to keep it on the right side, but I'll just look at this side. Okay. Just to not be confusing. Scoot back a little bit. Like that? Uh, I think... That is, is that better? Yeah, that's great. So... She's laying in that fetal position again. Everything is lined up. Knees are together. Hips are straight. Shoulders are straight. She's got, since she's laying on her right hand, or laying on her right arm, she's got her right hand through the horn of the kettlebell, which is sitting beside her. Do you see this? I think, the, I think that's, yeah, I think that's good. So she's going to take that kettlebell in that hand. She's going to bring the other hand there so that she's very aligned and everything is straight here. She's going to pull that kettlebell to her chest and roll over flat onto her back, okay? Do that three times for me. Kettlebell's here, fetal position, pulling it to her chest and rolling over. See this? Just like that. Go ahead and roll back one more time for me. Now do it the way that I don't, that don't want you to do it, but hang on one second. So this is what I don't want you to do. This is what a lot of people will do if you're, if you're not focused on what you're doing this no bueno okay this uh just kind of rolling over and pulling the kettlebell after you uh is a good way to potentially hurt the rotator cuff of your shoulder you like my demonstration <laughs> yes thank you for your drama i appreciate it <laughs> okay um so she's going to pull the kettlebell over her chest she's going to roll over flat onto her back she's going to use both hands to press the kettlebell to the sky and this is where this fist thing becomes really important. Remember I was talking about the break in the wrist? That's bad. Go ahead and move that away and show them. So this fist is exactly what you want here. Give me a break. Isn't it harder to hold that kettlebell up with, a, with your wrist broken yes, like that? Yes, I feel like it's going to... Yeah, totally. So if, you're, if the kettlebell hurts your forearm, you can put a towel between the bell and your forearm, but you want this wrist position instead of this break, which is no good. And it's going to make your whole arm weak if you have that break. So make sure your fist is in this position. And she's going to go ahead and run through the get up one more time. See how the kettlebell is directly stacked the whole time? That weight stack is perfect. Because she's holding her wrist in a strong position. That's why it's so important. If your wrist is breaking the whole time, the kettlebell is going to get away from you. You have to be a stable foundation for this. She's still going to take a breath at each step, please. Sorry. It's okay. Turkish get-ups are always supposed to be slow and thoughtful. You're feeling your body. You're moving your body into the next safe position. Nice big bridge, Just bringing the leg through, planting the knee, straighten up, adjust the feet, and there you go. Thank you for doing that. And stand. 
kettlebell still overhead. She's looking at it the whole time. You want to look at things that are heavy and over your head. It's a good idea. Sweeping the leg through the hole, down to the hip, down to the elbow, flat onto the back, rolling the whole way. Nice work, solid. She's going to bring the kettlebell instead of across her body like that. My goodness, Jen. Wait, I thought it was rolling good. Yeah, don't roll across your body, silly. You want to halo it overhead like we do in class. Yeah, thank you. Am I going to do another set? Yep. I think I'm going to try the heavier weight. All right. I like your spunk. If you feel like you're really, really solid with your getup and that felt really easy, you're welcome to do a heavier weight. But uh, always be careful, especially if you don't have somebody at home to spot. And I'm going to show you what spotting looks like real quick. That's a real good opportunity. Thanks, Jen. So for your spotting, your spotter wants to be right here all the time. Okay. And the reason for that is if this is too heavy and she needs to dump it, I'm going to grab it right out of her hands. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm watching the bell the whole time. Oh, the bell's out of view. I'm not spotting anymore. I'm a bad spotter. There, get it. So spotting is just uh stop right there. If this gets too heavy and she can't take it, she'll say something, right? Yeah. And I'll just grab it. Just like so, okay? You good? Yep. All right. Fun for the whole family. Nice. Good, good. Good stuff. Nice slow get up. Thoughtful. Wait. Rolling flat onto her back, pressing the bell overhead. Up on the elbow, extending the arm. Big bridge. Focused, concentrating on the next steps. Every right step. Arm out, hinge, sweep the leg, down to the butt, down to the elbow, flat on the back. Nice work. She's going to bring that down and roll to the, the left. Thank you. Woo. How was that? You like it? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So good. All right. 12.54. We're doing really well. That's excellent timing. Yeah. Let's uh, do a little bit of stretching. I think that's a great idea. All right. If you're still watching along, thank you so much for tuning in with us today. We're going to go ahead and uh, shoulder stretches, I think, are probably good. Mm -hmm. Um, so, my hair's all messed up from the halos. Yeah, that's pretty much how the halos work. So your shoulders might be feeling a little bit of it. Um, we did a lot of shoulder. That Turkish getup is very shoulder intensive. Uh, the halos are obviously really shoulder intensive too. So I really like to um, start by trying to get my hand. Put your hand like this so that it's kind of down. See how she's trying to walk her hand down in between her shoulder blades as much as she, as she can? And then she's going to put her other hand right here on the elbow. She's going to make sure that her hands aren't, uh, her arms aren't pushing against her head. She's got clearance. Um, turn. So you see how this is nice and low here? And she's just going to take this hand and kind of pull on that arm a little bit in this direction. And it's going to stretch her triceps a little bit. It's going to stretch some of the stuff in here in the shoulder as well. But I really like to start with this one for a shoulder stretch for myself. 
just uh, get that into this position and you want to breathe in and then exhale and as you're exhaling just kind of let the hair fall out of you and as you're exhaling pull a little harder and find the position that your body tells you to stop and then take a deep breath in in that position and then exhale and see if you can pull a little more and if you can great if you can't no problem no judgments we're just here chilling out you really want to take a lot of time when you're stretching uh, one of the things that we we rush through stretching a lot in uh, our society like we rush through most other things and you guys have nothing but time right now so this is a great time to stretch <laughs> oh, man. okay good uh, go ahead and do the other side same thing here she's just trying to walk the hand down into the uh, between her shoulder blades as far as she can She's got this hand over here on the elbow and she's just kind of pulling this arm back towards me and uh, making sure that she's not cranking on her head or her neck. Turn a little tiny bit. There we go. She's making sure she's not cranking on her head or her neck. It's really all just in this tricep here. She's breathing nice and deep, exhaling and pulling a little bit during the exhalation. Next is a shoulder stretch where uh, you're gonna you're gonna get this part of your shoulder here, and what this looks like is you want to take uh, which side do you want to do right. She's gonna take her right hand out. No, hang on, step by step. Right hand out in front of her. Turn to the side. There you go. And uh, she's going to put her palm flat against the ground just like so. And actually, I can back up. Wait. And then she's gonna pull this across her body. And you're going to grab it with the other hand right about here behind her elbow. And give me a bad one first. This is what everybody does. See this? The shoulder's all shrugged up into her neck. This is not good. You don't want to do it this way, but this is what everybody does. So you really have to be mindful to pull that shoulder down and away and then pull your arm at you. And you're going to feel it right here in this spot. Give me a bad one one more time. This is what you don't want this to look like, okay? If you, you're not paying attention to what you're doing and you're not being mindful, this is what will happen just because that's what we do. You want to pull it down and then she's trying to pull her elbow towards her heart center, okay? That's what you're after. It's a really nice stretch. I like it. Same thing on this side. Palm down across the body, making sure to pull this shoulder away from the ear, okay? And then pulling... With all of her might, as she exhales, she's squeezing the arm into her body. So good. What beautiful shoulders you have. Thank you. I can tell you've been working them. <laughs> mm. Good stuff. Uh, you'll find that the more that you work your grip, the stronger uh, and more healthy your shoulders will be, too. There's really a direct correlation between your grip and uh, your shoulder health. Uh, and there's also a correlation between your heart chakras and your hands. Um, so yeah, if you really, really work on your grip, your shoulders will be stronger, your heart will feel really good, and uh, it's good for uh, activities of daily life and your chaturanga and uh, all kinds of other things. So uh, I think that's all we've got for today. I hope that it was not too much of a train wreck with... Uh, with doing a live stream kettlebell class. It's the first time I've ever tried to do something like this. Uh, once again, I just want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you, Jen, for helping me yeah. out. I really appreciate you helping me to demo. Uh, if you guys can... Yeah, yeah. And if you guys can uh, show me a little bit of love and support, I've got a Patreon. Uh, my Patreon is Ritual Fitcraft, R-I-T-U-A-L-F-I-T-C-R-A-F-T. You can also PayPal me at... Uh, HTTP colon forward slash forward slash PayPal dot M E slash Mike Welch C P T. It's M I K E W E L C H C P T. And that is my PayPal uh, address. You can also Venmo me at Ritual Fitcraft, R I T U A L F I T C R A F T. Uh, I plan to do three classes a week uh, as it stands right now. Uh, the next class is going to be Monday, 
and that will be my uh, movement meditation magic class, which I normally do at Rooted Space. We're going to move that into the home studio. Uh, I'm going to do that at 6 o'clock, my normal time. Uh, and then Wednesday, I'm going to do a centered core class. We're going to do some core specific exercises, and I think that one is going to be about 45 minutes or so. Um, so those are my, my three scheduled classes right now for the foreseeable future. Maybe uh, I'll adjust things a little bit depending on uh, if I get any feedback or not. Um, but uh, yeah, so tune in uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and uh, I will stream them on Facebook Live, or I will share an address uh, if I pick up a streaming service of some sort. Thanks very much, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon.